Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Right. Um, thank you for the opportunity to share my thought about this small topic, the future <laughs> of higher ed. Um, I'm going to well, first tell a little story. Uh, 25 years ago, uh, in my indiscretionary youth, <laughs> I made a horrible mistake. I always want to be an innovator. I say, wow, among all the possible ways to innovate, what should I do? I went to the dark alley of PhD program. <laughs> yeah. Believing that is the road to the mecca of innovation. Boy, I was wrong. <laughs> um, but I did the second best, did the second best. I uh, complete my computer science degree from UC Irvine. Uh, I tell, tell a little story about my, my research. And um, I decided my passion and my effort, uh, instead of directly, in addition to directly innovate, I want to be a cultivator of innovation. So over the last 20 years, I work uh, at the CSU Montreal Bay, which is one of the newer campuses uh, they supposed to be the most innovative one. The first few years it was, then it become, again, a big bureaucrat. Um, but it's still an exciting place. So um, <laughs> over there, so let's start with UC, UC Irvine. So I always believe the innovation in our time is to make the, the person, that's us, have a better connection with other people through technology, through technology. At that time, um, that was 25 years ago, my group at UC Irvine, we were the first one to prove that through a, a at that time we don't call it big data, it was an extra system. Uh, through the extra system, we can make radiologists more effective. At that time, the Digital mammography was just in its infancy, so we prove that uh, we can transmit those images throughout different doctors, so they collectively, with the help of the machine, to make their diagnosis more effective. So t even today, some of the GE, those uh, big digital mammography machines, still have a few lines of my code, and I was uh, very proud of that. Um, to make it kind of a political incorrect Forgive me. Uh, at that time, the, our group is all uh, male students, and our lab is filled with mammogram. Uh, and we were very happy that we focus on breast cancer instead of prostate cancer. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my early story. Um, so, being a kind of a, a supporter, and I, I want to be actually like you, instead of in the in the ivory tower to kind of support the innovator. I was I want to be the one in the industry, but you know I'm doing my second best. Um, the reason why I joined Monsieur College is a small college in Mon Monrovia. It's about 9.2 miles from here, <clears throat> because it inspired to be a university of and for the innovators. We have a global business program, we have IT program, we have digital media. When, when the board invited me to come and look at their uh, kind of three stool of innovation right under one roof, I was very excited, so I accept the position. So I'm pretty new to LA, um, so I'm building my social network. I would love to connect with you uh, in this meeting and in the future. Uh, we're gonna talk about um, important things. What are students and society asking from the university? And I want to get your opinion to see if I'm wrong. It's interesting, in the higher ed, there is a lot of innovation kind of on the, on the peripheral, but if you look at the core activity today in the university, it has not changed much. I'm going to show you some example. But I'm going to spend, uh, kind of inundate you with uh, about 20, the fad or trend or could be the major uh, future innovation in the higher ed. And we'll spend a little bit, a few minutes, talk about 
uh, what happened in Mount Zero College and how can you be part of that experience. I got my PhD from UC Irvine, not far from here. At that time, I, I look at LA as a kind of dark side. Uh, then I went to the real dark side of Silicon Valley. Then I went to the real dark side about seven years ago. I got a grant from um, the Obama, uh, Obama administration to start an institute of innovation to help entrepreneurs like you to start connecting with business, uh, college to start business. And then I went to the real dark side of venture capitalists. Um, and I had lots of friends uh, in there, and I connect them with my students, and I'm trying to build that connection here also. Okay. And uh, over the last few years, uh, in addition to the mammography, digital, digitize that, I am uh, the one created a complete online computer science bachelor degree out of CSU Monterey Bay. And people in year 2000 told me, it cannot be done. And you can learn a lot, some kind of <clears throat> discussion liberal art. They told me it cannot be done to do a high quality, highly engaged computer online program. And I built it. Although I left CSU, it is still the largest online computer science program among all the UC and CSU. And we use the same concept. How do you connect people in a meaningful way to enhance everyone's experience, to make students feel engaged. So I'm convinced when we move things from the analog world to the digital world, it may be different, but it could be as effective, even sometimes or more. So we do test our students at the end of the, the degree. We test about 600 on-campus students, about 300 online. They perform about the same. Um, and my passion, in addition to Monsieur College, I'm always looking for to learn more about innovation and learn more about globalization. So, well, what's going on in the world, right? The, the, even the entire day tried to be often our ivory tower, but it that does impact the world and the world impact the higher ed. So we all know that now, the information is essentially free. Any facts, any data you can receive from the internet at no cost. So in the past, you know, two, three hundred years ago, till about fifty years ago, the higher ed focused on preserve, disseminate, and make sure that information stick into the student brain. That has changed quite a bit. When I ask a question to my kid, what who is in college, and also our students, they don't kind of bow their head and start thinking. They pull out their cell phone searching for answers. So information is free, it's right there. So the university has to change. Um, we are from industrial to post-industrial society. What does that mean? That means efficiency, searching for security, searching for food is no longer people's major concern. 50 or more longer time even when people want to get a job so they can feed themselves, feed their family. Now that is no longer the top concern. We are living in a world of plenty. Okay? The interesting thing is, um, I don't know if you follow you know, the news in the remote world, say for example, Africa. There is a problem of no longer the starving kids. They have obesity problem. So we live in a world of plenty. So that changed quite a bit of our thinking, changed the way university and higher ed need to run. Globalization. Any of your product, your service, your competition, and your market is no longer Pasadena, no longer Los Angeles, is probably in the remote village of Africa or China. Especially, especially you have to think about it. Where is the place can adopt new technology? It's probably not an aging, developed world. It's in the young, changing, developing world. And with the internet, your product can reach there really quickly. Let me give you an example, how fast. 
You know, how long did the online payments started in the United States? Almost 20 years ago. Not that far from, you know, when the uh, Netscape uh, started public um, in 1995. And how many of you can go to that coffee shop instead of giving $2 of, uh, to put in a jar can you swipe your watch or swipe your car or even just look at your eyeball and pay that $2 donation? <laughs> Not yet. But we, you probably heard about it. I was in China three, uh, three weeks ago. I was walking uh, outside of Forbidden City. I see a little street vendor selling the, 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 the candy on the stick. So wow, I saw that before. That's interesting. I want to buy one. That's equivalent of about one US dollars. So I pulled out my cash, and the little little vendor on the bicycle pulled out a, a, a QR code, say, you can pay by this. And at that time, I already have it. I scanned my phone on the QR code. I paid a $1 within about five seconds. This story tells us there are countries like China and Africa. They adapt to new technology much faster because there's a bad vacuum, right? People don't have credit cards. So they, if you have a new product, you have to think about how do you reach the people are looking for new technology. There are two groups. One is developing world. The other one, if you think about almost all the technology, how do they start in a developed market like the United States? They start in college, right? Airbnb. We all know the story, right? So the group of uh, students in San Francisco, their friends is coming to a big convention. The hotel room is so expensive. They look at their old couch, not unlike that one. Say, hmm, you know, that was worth $12 a night. Let's put it on the internet. That become the largest hotel chain in the world within five years. So that story also tells us the second market, or maybe the first market that all of us have to think about is start with college students <laughs> and I want you I want to invite you to use my college, <laughs> Monster college as that guinea pig you say like, what does this work this thing kind of you know Facebook at that time Mark, Mark and Zuckerberg uh, went to the liberal art uh, classes and, oh boy I really don't want to sit here but the final is coming so <coughs> can I get the website so get all the students in this class so I can copy their assignments <laughs> That's how you start without a lot of marketing dollars. You want to market to a 50 years old, you have to spend millions and millions of dollars, put on the ad, put on the TV show, but if you want to market to developing market or market to uh, the college student, you just need a sexy idea. So keep that in mind. Okay. I'm going to focus on kind of one thing, the artificial intelligence. That, I believe, in the future of higher ed, and in the future of a lot of us, that will be a key that's new, exciting, and how do you leverage on that power will make or break many of our startups. <clears throat> so, kind of this is a, almost a, a religious information, but it's so true. How do we utilize this is, is, is hard. Meaning is become more and more important than the means, okay? So how can you create a value, create a passion, create a meaning that you, your organization or startup will be successful? So, what are students and society asking higher ed? Well, first, they still want that, right? It's not just a diploma or a wonderful transcript. They want students to build a portfolio. So they will come to a student and say, well, in, in addition to this sheet of a transcript, what can you actually do? So student in the higher ed, in, in all education, need to demonstrate the skill. So maybe for the startup, how do you help students or college to demonstrate the demonstrable skills. Online portfolio, maybe provide a 3D 
interaction, maybe provide some kind of tool to connect the student to the real world, that is still an opportunity. We want students to, well, this is a long time coming, right? Problem solving, critical thinking. No longer student can be successful, just listen to the teacher and say, okay, I can regurgitate next week on, the, on my midterm and done. We want students to look at a problem and provide an innovative solution on their own. They need to collaborate and communicate. And kind of sad, uh, some of you may be still college students. When I went to uh, industry, <clears throat> I said, well, what kind of student do you want? They said, can you make sure they can talk and write? I said, wait, is that a low bar or this? And, and often our students, they are so mesmerized by that you know, six inch uh, screen, they reduce their passion or desire and ability to connect with people. And I talked to our film, um, the, the chair. I said, what, what kind of students in, the, in our film school will be successful? I was thinking, oh, they can do video editing, they can write script, uh, they look nice, they have a rich father. No. You say, the student will be successful is that he or she can tell an interesting story in a cocktail party. Okay? So who can, in a cocktail party, be brave enough as a 21 year old, go to an old guy and tell his or her story. That, not only the skill, but the courage and habit of collaborate and communicate is still, it's, I can tell you that's actually probably lower today than 10 years ago. And that's something that the future of university need to reverse the trend. Is not only know the technology, but know the people. So I started my talk with one sentence. I don't know if you remember, but that sentence defined us as a human versus the machine. I come down here saying, I have a story to tell you. I made a mistake 25 years ago. <laughs> machine usually don't do that, right? They don't tell a story. They don't make a big mistake. They, they don't look at your eye and share their emotion. That we have to make sure our students not only have the skills, but they know the human feeling, know how to connect with them. Um, learn independently fast. Things are changing very fast. When I was uh, in, in school, there's no Python, or there's even no internet. So how do we get students to Learn fast by themselves before they graduate. That's a very important. Okay. Quick discovery of problem and solution. Okay. For example, we are going to uh, in starting this summer. Every student graduate from Monster College has to have an internship. Probably many of them will seek you out to help you to globalize your marketing message, to help you to, to, to improve your UI so you can connect better to the college students. And of course, they can write the software and write the, 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 the network to help you. So we hope one of you will come back to me a year from now and say, yes, Eric, your student can really quickly find out a problem and provide some solutions. That's our hope. The last one, the student today and all of us need to think about our market and our competition is global. So what kind of skill they need? I will, I will, my hunch, which I believe is true, is they need these two extreme skills. <laughs> On this side, they have to touch in a proper way, human. They need to know how to connect to people very different from theirs. Okay? They need to, need to know the culture, they need to express their feeling, they need to be able to look at the eyes instead of, oh, I will text you. They need to be comfortable communicating with human, especially the human being very different from them. Okay. But of course, they need to know the machine. This is the powerful tool they can use. And 
the one group, uh, the one project will be very successful is to connect these two. Think about it. The current, all these big, uh, uh, interesting business, Airbnb, the Facebook, they is on this path. They use technology to connect the machine, the information and network to human, okay? So this will become even more strict. On this side, it's no longer just a hard, cold networking and machine. The machine become intelligent. So your product or our student, they have to learn how to master this powerful tool, okay? Long, long time ago, when the first machine was introduced in England, people are afraid of it. Oh, they're going to take away our job. We can never compete with the machine, which is probably true to some degree, but more jobs are created to master the machine, right? So instead of you plowing the land with maybe a cow and with a mother pushing to help you, now is how do you leverage, at that time, the engine, right? In the future, and even now, how can you connect, how do you master the powerful and still advancing technology of AI? But you never want to lose sight of that, okay? And I always tell my the entrepreneur I help and my student, at the end, your product need to connect with people. Otherwise, technology, no one is buying technology. People are buying a solution to solve human problems. Okay, so these are two extremes. Our students need to have both. They need to have, in, in addition to just data information, they need to develop a wisdom, which is very human being. They have to make the judgment that's beyond logic, okay? They have to impact people with emotion. They need to know art. They need to empathize. They should look at a people in need and find out how can they come up with a solution. They need to be able to tell a story. They need to have passion, love. They love to sport. They need to have a culture, especially multiculture. They, this is important. Can they inspire other people? Can they inspire other people? Can they entertain? Uh, probably, I would say, every decade from now, your work hour will be one hour shorter. That's just on the, 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 the regulation. I believe we'll follow you know, friends. Every working day will be probably from eight to some of you probably 14, but for most people at eight, in a decade will be seven, another decade will be six, probably reduced to four. What do we do with the rest of the time? And who among us, my student and you, can fill all the hours with meaningful, entertainment, education, connection with other human beings will be the future. On this side, this is still ongoing, but it's, this is not the means, that's the meaning. This will be important, but less important in the future. How do you collect data? How do you share information? How do you accumulate knowledge? How do you be more precise? How do you come up with algorithm to, you know, so be the other guy from between the Google uh, GPS and the ways. Uh, how do you manufacture in cheap way? How do you cost reduction? How do you duplicate some ideas as fast as possible? How do you achieve efficiency? These are still important, but I believe every student need to have the other side. Okay, so just give you some example. The the interesting the trend in high ed. Um, this photo is taken last year in Harvard. Look at the teacher, right? Oh, There's probably guest speaker. The student was looking around and all listening to them. The guy was not bored, it's not very interesting. That this girl is watching the Facebook. Um, <laughs> so this is what happened just a few months ago. Let's look at this. This is 600 years ago in Italy. The same thing. The teacher is talking. <laughs> That guy is not paying attention. Uh, this guy is thinking about, you know, where can I find my friend? Uh, this guy is sleeping. <laughs> so higher ed has not changed over 600 years. Um, 
I bet if you uh, if you go to any college now, this is still the same. So that um, has not changed. It's kind of uh, interesting. But people are trying to change. So these are the plethora of innovation kind of uh, coming inundate. Okay, let me quickly go through them and see if you can plug it in. Some of them have this is just a fad; it disappeared a couple of years. Uh, some of it is bec will become a major, major trend. MOOC is multi open online classroom. Yeah, massive, mm -hmm. massive open online course. So anything taught in Caltech, taught in MIT, you can download it for free. Okay, turn it in. The machine will check if you copy other people's paper. Uh, it's a horrible thing to do to students, but uh, we find out. We, we go back to a few years, take out their papers, and say, whoa, we should have used it. <laughs> but they only got diploma. I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Grammarly, people that online will help you how to write. Okay, So the spelling check become uh, kind of the per se. This will actually check the meaning of the word instead of spelling of the word. Mm. Okay, E-learning, blended learning. E-learning e become almost a mainstream now for adult education. Blended learning, that means in, in addition to the online lecture, testing, you know, participating forum, people still want to gather once in a while to get that chemistry, get that part that machine couldn't do together. Okay? Collaborative industry, license IP, the, the university all looking for extra revenue. They want to create some IP, like when I create a digital mammography, uh, GE bought it for $2 million, and the poor graduate student, Eric Tao, got Real money, I got 5,000, we can live off, yeah. I bought a lot of beer. Uh, connecting with industry, so it's the industry people coming back to university to be to learn new things. Um, licensed curriculum, if you have a great, great curriculum, you can license to other school, uh, outsourcing, online testing services. This is still a market people should uh, explore. So government is worried about some school enrolled thousands of students online. They all pass the class with an A. Is that true? Or their brother-in-law hidden under the table doing the exercise, doing the assignment for them. So how do you authenticate a person online for the for, for testing? There's a lot of uh, interesting opportunity. Um, privatized public university, that's kind of interesting. If you go to a lot of UC and CSU, uh, including the one I used to work for, they are maybe 90% or 80% of the curriculum and degree are supported by your tax dollar. But they are growing kind of a so-called self-support program. They have more and more programs, especially like MBA, they charge $30,000, $40,000 a year. It's essentially a private institution in the public. Is that right? Okay. We don't know. It's kind of strange. Okay. We attract more and more international students. Most of the bigger school now have a 10% of international. That is probably a good thing, but is that overall a good thing? Uh, maker space. Well, we all know that almost all universities have a space similar to this, helping students to innovate. Uh, specialist program, learning analytics. So college are collecting all the behavior online and find out what student more interested, how long do they stay, and do analysis what can correlate the online behavior to student success. Guess of all the behavior, there's one can predict 70% of student final grade, passing or not passing, is how early they log into the system uh, before semester start. So there are two groups. One group, they come in, log in the system, before semester start to find out the syllabus, find out the assignment, find out the textbook, find out is that in the other cute girl in the class. <laughs> the other group, they wait, and probably two weeks after semester start, the teacher said, you have to come in, otherwise you're missing the first assignment. And that one behavior predict 70% of the final grade. So we might as well just go ahead and final. We, we just check and who log in first and give them a break. <laughs> First experience, a lot of kids, they come to the university not only to, to learn, but to grow up and provide them a nurturing environment. This is important for Monsignor College. We believe 
the university need to be a university of the community. So we're going to require students to get out of the campus, do an extension or internship. Um, active learning, that's kind of the flip classroom. That means most of the information is done online. Students come to the classroom for doing the assignment and doing the discussion. Okay? So they don't come to the class just receive information. They come here to, to interact with students. So I told my daughter, uh, she went to a big school with like 300 people in the classroom. I told her, if you want to learn well, there's one secret. You want to see the professor's saliva coming out. <laughs> so if you sit always in the front row, you can see the saliva. Then it doesn't matter how many students are doing on Facebook or, or Blizzard games, you are in a class of one. So you have to pay attention. Um, I have not checked the homework. So. <laughs> Gamification made learning fun. Uh, digital library. Uh, nano degree. People can go to a two-day uh, workshop and receive 0 0.1 credit. So they can kind of gradually get their degree. Stackable degree, that means that four years, you can do one year, get a certificate, leave for the industry, do a startup, and come back to the second year. So you don't have to say, wow, I'm flunking school just like Bill Gates. You can come and go as you need because some type of opportunity for startup is right there. You couldn't wait. Right? Think about it. If that's if Harvard allowed that, then the Bill Gates won't be embarrassed that, that he doesn't have a degree. <laughs> Uh, sports team, that's, um, I'm, we are in Monster College, we want to build an e-sports team. Right? So any of you want to sponsor that, we love to have <laughs> Virtual reality based learning, so students, they put on their mask, they are in the immersive environment to learn. Uh, your portfolio of peer learning. Uh, this is, this is the, the holy grail, that's the infusing AI in learning. So can a student interact with the machine and find out exactly what's the best class for him. Otherwise, we are still in the industrial age. Every student coming in the production line. Doesn't matter how prepared or unprepared, he just going through the same experience with others. How do you change the system, probably through the machine, to make a learning more individualized? So, kind of, Quick conclusion, um, the opportunity for us and for the future of higher ed has to look at the two extremes. How do you use the machine? How do you use artificial intelligence to make your learning and make your career better? Down there, and how do you learn how to inspire others and create a passion and value? If any of us and our student can do both, he or she will be very successful. I will, let me see. Let me, okay, let me put in my plea. Uh, so um, I come here for a reason, right? Not only for, to enjoy. Donation! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, most of your college is uh, fairly young, about 30 years old. It's small, it's less than 1,000 students. Uh, it focused more in a kind of hands-on skill over the years, but the hands-on skill is still important. I'm building that college to my pet peeve. I want every student, doesn't matter they are in business, in digital art, or in IT, I want them to be an innovator because I believe that's the best career forward. To be able to do that, of course, we get the best faculty. Oh, by the way, we're growing the program, so if you're thinking about maybe you want to teach a class in programming, in marketing, in digital media, we are, lo we are looking for talent. We're looking for talent. Um, not far from here, but my plea is this. We graduate about, I would say, 200 students per year. I. Personally, I just guarantee every student and require them before they graduate, each one of them has to do an internship. They have to be out of the campus, working with company, entrepreneur, nonprofit. So I, as Judy, our career development committee, you say hi, um, 
I want her to help me to connect with you. Even you are one person startup, we would love to have a student project working with you to globalize it, to make it better UI, to do the back office programming. And if you um, love to hire a student or send your project for our student to work on or teach in our college, I would love to work with you. And to conclude, uh, I think the world is coming and the higher is coming too extreme. The, the master of the power of the machine and connect with the soft, never changing human nature. And in Monsieur College, we balance both. We focus both on the liberal art, knowing the person, and the hard, cold skill, knowing the machine. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Zach Patel. Um, I don't know about you guys, this seems like kind of a hard sell, like, you know, just exploiting some, some young guy or girl for your own personal gain for free. I don't know, I don't think you get a lot of takers here for internships. I'm, of course, being sarcastic, so, you know, if you guys are interested, please do submit your idea to Dr. Tao after uh, the Q&A session is over. And I just have to uh, piggyback, I think it's a really great idea, because a lot of people in, 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 in the university setting are really focusing on the practical skill sets, you know, the hard data of coding and artificial intelligence and machine learning, because we're all moving towards that direction uh, as the future of technology. But I think it's really important that we still c cultivate the human intellect and what people actually need for interpersonal development, because if you have great skills, but you have horrible interpersonal skills, you can have a hard time actually conveying your message to your target audience or even your developers. So I think that's a really good thing that you guys are doing, so kudos to that. Uh, we're going to open up to Q&A now. If you'd like to ask a question, John will walk around with the mic. Please uh, save storytelling for offline. Uh, Dr. Tao, will you be hanging out with us for a little bit after? Okay, cool. So if you'd like to share a story about your experiences, please save it for later. Thanks. Dr. Tao, thank you so much for speaking to us today. You said that my question to you is, is more of almost a challenge or, or maybe um, more of a description of what you meant. Um, you said that you know people will be working less and less. All right. My question is, are they working less and less, or if education, as you've defined it, and how it's developed in terms of all these different opportunities, does work and storytelling and that human element change the way that work is, so that work starts moving across all these different typical personal spaces in ways that technology enables us, as opposed to a separation of work and non-work, is it more of a blended? And could you talk to that? Thanks. Yeah. The fortunate part is that the hour you have to work will shrink. The hour you want to work, or you feel the desire to work, will be even more. Because the, the power of the technology enables us to work at any place, any time. And people will reach you like about a year ago, I was uh, uh, hiking in the uh, Grand Canyon. My cell phone rings. Was, yeah. And so I think the good thing is for entrepreneurs have more and more opportunity to work even harder. But when you are tired, or say, I only need to work this society acceptable hours, it probably will be less and less. Okay. Uh, the good thing is that because the, 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 if you can master the machine, your work will be more effective. So, and hopefully more fun. Thank you for that question. Hi, Dr. Tao. Thank you for speaking. Um, we, um, we are a very innovative group here that, meet, you know, that meets every Friday morning. Um, but part of the reason why innovation happens is because we focus a lot on um, the creative process. And before, people used to not think about it, but with the advent of um, of um, design thinking and integrating it into like production, like uh, design, innovation, technology, the process becomes very, very important. Um, the creative process becomes very important. Can you talk a little bit about how um, the Mount Sierra College is, uh, integrates the creative process into your, you know, in institution? Everybody, when I was in CSU, every January I give a workshop in Stanford D, uh, D School. 
So design thinking is a powerful one, especially when the market is not clear. If you if you haven't haven't heard about design thinking, if, if you don't know where is the market, design thinking is a great way to explore it. Um, so when people do design thinking, for example, the, the perfect uh, the, the company's idea, if they put a group of people to develop a new product or service, it's about seven to ten. They make sure they put a social science or, or a anthropologist student or a graduate in there. So in the, in the process of the Monsieur College, we do two things. First, we really emphasize the GE, the general education, is not there to block students from learning their desired computer science or design. It is important part for them to understand the human being. So their design and their technology can solve real problems. Okay. So that's important. Then our incubator, we, we call it the LA technology. Our incubator, the team is multidisciplinary. The team has media, technology, and business. The reason why we want to do an externship or an internship before they go into the senior project is they need to go to the real world. So, wow, really, there's a need for this technology. Otherwise, they will come up with a 200 ideas that nobody wants. It. So in the beginning, we emphasize the GE is important to know the human need, and at the end, before they graduate, you need to observe the world. What is the real need? Right? The real need could be some, something simple. I would love to ride a bike from here to back my campus, but who's going to rent me the bike? Or like the Airbnb, there's a lot of empty sofa in Pasadena. Like, can we can we use it for ten dollars a night? Okay. So knowing the human society and. By the way, those companies are created not by technologists. They're all created by liberal arts students. So there's a, there's a future for liberal arts students. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's how we do it. In the beginning, it, it kind of inspired them with the GE. At the end, make sure they come out with a human, solu human problem solution for the senior project. Thank you for allowing me to say that. I did not play the question. <laughs> Uh, time for one more question, and since I've got the mic, I'm going to ask that. Um, so we do have a lot of uh, liberal arts type people here in this group, and uh, they all, they, a lot of them have a lot of really great ideas, business ideas and all that, but they don't know the technology. So your students, and you mentioned that you're looking for students uh, to do internships and all that, they have skills where they're, they're uh, being taught things like Python and Scratch, uh, VR, AR, big data, uh, blockchain, stuff like that. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Our IT program cover kind of the harder, colder part of networking and cybersecurity, but definitely have the software development uh, using a VR, using a cell phone. They can work with you and industry to create the newest uh, technology that actually can be useful. But remember, they are students. So they can come up with a prototype, they can show, wow, this thing will work wonderfully, but they probably I hope they can, but they probably cannot be your mission critical software developer. They will come up with a working prototype and test your idea. They are perfect for that. Okay. So the answer is yes, thank you.